Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now we're kicking off section 9.2 in this video. Uh, that's the section on modular arithmetic. And this is one of my favorite things to kind of play with in mathematics. I really enjoy this and I hope you do too uh, after, we're all, after it's all said and done. But before we talk about modular arithmetic, I need to define something called a congruence. Now if you recall back in the videos where we talked about equivalence classes of relations, we saw, I defined a congruence there, and we saw that a congruence was in fact an equivalence class. Uh, but in general, we say that A congruent to B, that's what this little symbol is here, this is read A congruent to B mod N, if and only if N divides the difference A minus B. Now it's the same, uh, N will also of course divide the difference B minus A because it's an equivalence relation. Uh, in other words, A congruent to B means that B is also congruent to A. This goes both ways. We just write mod n on the right hand side by convention. Uh, but in other words, another way to think about this is that b is the remainder, no, the remainder <laughs> when a is divided by n. Since if I take our kind of uh, Euclidean algorithm or division algorithm type division process, let's say I divide a by n. So a is going to equal qn plus b. Now I can subtract b to the other side, I'm going to get that a minus b equals qn. Now, of course, n divides qn, so that implies that n divides a minus b. So n divides a minus b is the same as thinking of b as being a remainder of a after division by n. Now, that's a way to find the unique congruence that we're going to call the residue. Um, but, of course, the congruence is going to be any number that satisfies this criteria. This just gives us one specific number that satisfies this criteria. Right? But that's the one that we're going to be most concerned with. Now we can talk about modular arithmetic modulo n, where n is any natural number. The standard range for arithmetic for a particular n, modulo n, is going to be the set 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1, and we call these the residues modulo n. So if we think of a congruent to b mod n in this way here with the division, this division is always going to give us the b that is in the residues mod n, and this is where we want our congruences to end up. Uh, usually for a congruence problem you're going to start with some a that is not a residue and you want to figure out what the residue b is that a is congruent to. So let's take a look at some examples. So we ready for examples? Yes we are. Solve the congruence x squared congruent to 1 mod 5. Now there's two different ways that we can do this problem. So I'll outline these both as methods. Let's see method 1 And for method one, we're just going to plug in all residues. Modulo five. And again, um, when we're solving a general congruence like this, we're not looking for an x that where x squared equals one, right? So normally the solution for this would be just be plus or minus one, but we're looking for all x that are congruent or all x that when we square them they're congruent to 1, so it's a little bit different. But in all cases, any time we solve a congruence, we can always show that solution as one of the residues. So if we check all the residues modulo 5, all of those that show up as solutions is going to be our complete set of solutions. So let's take a look. First of all, 0 is our first residue. Well, 0 squared obviously is congruent to 0 mod 5. So that's not going to be our solution one of our solutions because it's not congruent to 1. Now 1 squared is congruent to 1 mod 5. I mean it's just equal to 1, right? 2 squared is congruent to 4 mod 5. So that's not a solution. 3 squared equals 9 and 9 is congruent to 4 mod 5. Right? Again we're looking for here I want a member of my residue class 9 is not in my residue class, so to re reduce it with the congruence, I can either think of dividing 9 by 5 and taking the positive remainder, which is 4, um, or you can think of it as just the difference between the multiple of 5 less, th the closest multiple of 5 that's less than 9. All right, the closest multiple of 5 less than 9 is 5, and that's basically going to be my um, QB in my division algorithm, and 4 is my remainder. Right? So this is not a solution, 3 is not a solution, and 4 4 squared equals 16. Now by the same thing we just did, 16 is 1 more than 15. 15 is 0 mod 5, so this is congruent to 1 
mod 5, isn't it? So our answer is x is congruent to 1 or 4 mod 5. Now this is a congruent solution set. So this is all incongruent solutions, 1 and 4, but this isn't just the numbers 1 and 4, right? x congruent to 1 means that x could be 1, it could be 6, it could be 11, it could be 16, it could be 21, it could be anything that's congruent to 1 mod 5. If I plug in any of those numbers that I just said into x squared, the result that I get is going to be congruent to 1 when I mod it out by 5. And the same thing with 4. I can look at 4 or 9 or 14 or 19, etc., etc. And any of those numbers, if I square them, I'm also going to get something that's congruent to 1 mod 5. Now I said I had another method to solve this problem, so let's take a look. Method 2, we're just going to solve it directly. Instead of exhausting all of the possible solutions up here, we're going to solve it directly and find the exact solutions. So if I look at x squared equals 1, that implies that x equals plus or minus 1. Now I'm not using congruence yet, right? x just equals plus or minus 1. Straight basic arithmetic that we're all used to. But if x equals 1, that means that x is congruent to 1 mod 5. And if x equals negative 1, that means x is congruent to 4 mod 5. Right? Negative 1 is congruent to 4 mod 5. The reason is, if I add 5 to negative 1, I get 4. So if I divide negative 1 by 5, I get a remainder of negative 1, but that again is congruent to 4 if I'm looking at congruences in my residue class. Right? So this is the direct way we would solve this. Let's take a look at some different types of examples. Now these congruences are kind of fun. And, um, oh, didn't finish. This is 3 cubed. There we go. These congruences are kind of fun, and I really advise you to practice a lot of these in preparation for a test. Take all the odd numbers out of your book and just work them out. They're pretty quick. You want to make sure you're doing the right thing. Like, make sure you understand that negative 1 is congruent to 4 mod 5, and that 4 is the correct answer because it's in the residue class. These are things that should come very naturally to you when you're doing these problems, especially on a test. So let's take a look at these problems. 3 cubed plus 2 mod 5. Well first I can cube this out. This is 27 plus 2 mod 5. It's equal to 29 mod 5. And that in turn is equal to 4 mod 5. Now notice I didn't use the congruent signs here, but that's because I had mod 5 on the left. 3 cubed plus 2 mod 5 means what is this congruent to in the residue class. So this in the residue class is equal to this in the residue class is equal to this in the residue class is equal to this in the residue class. If I start with a number and I don't put mod 9 like I'm going to do in this next example, then we'll need to use congruence once we start using it. So looking here, 3 times 13 minus 7 now here I'm going to use congruence because I don't have mod 9 on the left. Now mod 9, 13 is 4. So I can do that in this multiplication. 3 times 13 mod 9 is the same as 3 times 4 in mod 9. When we think of congruences in a certain modulo n, those numbers are for all basic means equivalent. We can exchange them with each other whenever we want to during arithmetic and get the same answer. Now negative 7 if I add 9 to that, I get 2, right? You can always add an increment of your modulus to get another congruent number. So negative 7 is actually congruent to positive 2 mod 9. Now this is much more easy to work with, right? 3 times 4 was just 12, and I have 2 mod 9. And this is 14 mod 9, but 14 is just congruent to 5 mod 9, isn't it? All right, kind of fun. Now, one last thing I want to talk about, and I already kind of mentioned it. When we talked about relations before, we talked about equivalence relations, equivalence classes, and I already talked about this in that video then, but just a reminder, the relation x congruent to y mod n is an equivalence relation on the set of integers. The equivalence class of x, we denote it in this way, this is going to be all y such that x is congruent to y mod n. And this is called the congruence class or residue class of x. In other words, 
I'm just saying that I can think of any number x as being equivalent in a modular arithmetic to any other number that it's congruent to in that modular arithmetic. And I can substitute it for any of those numbers at any time. Right? It makes it really convenient to solve certain types of problems. Um, and it's, it's kind of a neat idea. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about multiplicative inverses and zero divisors. These are things that are not present in the integers until, well, mostly not present in the integers uh, until we get into a modular arithmetic. So we'll see you there.